Good morning, it's Jim in beautiful Beaverton, Oregon. Well, today is uh, August 15th. Uh, it's a gorgeous afternoon. The this, this backyard is just getting into shade. So I thought I would talk and demonstrate a little bit about the kind of fish you might want to have in your aquaponics system. So I'm, uh, I'm only going to talk about fish that I know something about because it would be stupid to talk about other fish. So let's uh, and on top of that I should say that I don't eat my fish so I'm not raising fish. I don't eat the fish in this system. I eat fish. Uh, but I don't raise fish to eat so it's kind of a different deal. So although many of these fish could be raised to eat or you could eat them right now. Anyhow, uh, on with the show. Uh, the first fish that I'd like to talk about is koi. Uh, I have raised koi and koi could be used in an aquaponics system but there are several major problems that you have to get by if you want to use koi in an aquaponic system. Uh, first of all, koi, which is those beautiful big colored fish you see in ponds, get very, very large, 10, 20 pounds or more uh, per fish. So the minimum that you want to raise them would be a thousand gallon tank for me, anyhow. Uh, that's the absolute minimum. So you got to get by that. Uh, they cost a lot of money. The good ones, uh, $25 would be cheap. You know, we on up to thousands of dollars for one. Um, <clears throat> they will and do eat all of your plants. If you have water lilies such as this over here, they will absolutely just destroy them. So that's another thing with koi is if you got them, you, you need to have them in the tank and the tank needs to be dedicated to koi. If you already have a koi pond, and I'm talking to the choir, it's a wonderful thing to hook your koi pond up to an aquaponic system, real easy, just like this over here. And, and you'll really see a difference with the filtration. I think it's a wonderful idea. So if you've already got it, let's go from there. Otherwise, I would probably write off koi. Uh, let's get on to the next three that I'm actually raising here. And first thing about all of these fish is they are winter hardy and summer hardy. They can survive water at 80 some degrees or they can survive it with ice on top and that's an important feature uh, to make it easy to deal with. So first thing, uh, catfish. We aren't going to see the catfish I have, I don't think. I have one big bullhead catfish down in here. He's not going to come out. He only comes out when he wants to or she. Uh, they make good fish in aquaponics except they will uh, eat pretty much anything that's smaller than they are, which is not necessarily a bad thing. They, uh, bullheads get up to about, I would say a pound and a half in normal captivity. This one I've got here is a pound at least. Uh, so you have to figure that when, you, when you're stocking your pond. Uh, I've only got the one, so I know that people do raise them and you could raise it to eat. If you were gonna raise catfish to eat, and I'm gonna break my rule because I haven't raised this kind channel cat or something that gets big fast would be the way to go. Let it get big and then eat it. Anyhow, uh, they're pretty good all around fish. I don't think I would stock with them if I was doing it again. Uh, next thing on the list and one of my favorites that I have quite a few of here is goldfish. Uh, in particular, in my indoor system, I have goldfish. They are cheap. They're winter hardy. You can, you can literally leave them under the ice. Uh, and they're just all around nice fish. They're easy to deal with. They don't mess with each other or anything. Uh, there's two kinds of goldfish in this world. There's regular goldfish and there's fancy goldfish. And the difference is the tail. The tail on a fancy goldfish is split. If you're gonna have your goldfish in tanks that are, we'll say 100 gallons or less, go with fancy goldfish or even more because they're not very fast. It takes them a long time to get from one end to the other of a pond like that. You get a, a regular goldfish would be from here to there and just like that. So you want at least a few hundred gallons to get the big ones, but they make excellent, excellent fish for aquaponics. Uh, and then on to the final fish we're gonna talk about today and that is sunfish. Uh, in this tank here, I have 10 big bluegill give or take, and uh, they are a type of sunfish. There's a bunch of different kinds of sunfish. Some of these sunfish are around the town. Uh, I'm going to feed them and hopefully they're going to come out and jump out of the water. So here we go.
They, uh, they get pretty active uh, when they want the food. They're fun to watch. They don't seem to mess with each other. They're, you know, they're not hard to deal with. Some of the fish in this uh, pond here are over 10 years old. So you, when you get these, you gotta figure you might have them for a while. Uh, I have a different kind of sunfish inside the greenhouse of uh, Bluegill Hotel called the pumpkin seed, which is similar to this in many ways. I'm going to step around here, except uh, it only gets about half as big or less. And uh, it would win my vote for the number one fish put in your aquaponics system because they get to maybe half a pound very tops. Uh, and they're very similar to these. That's what I would get if I was getting them. And now one more tip that I will give you. Uh, God, you know, these fish, they live in every pond, every ditch, every river in North America has got bluegill in it. So the obvious thing it would seem when you want some is just if you're a fisherman in particular, you, get, you know, get your pole, go out and catch yourself a few. But no, that's not a good idea. If you, uh, if you bring fish from the pond over there and put them in this, you'll, you'll be lousy with uh, parasites and nothing flat. Uh, if you possibly can, get your fish from a hatchery or mail order and those people at the hatchery will deal with things like parasites and you'll have clean fish go in and everything will be fine. Uh, so anyhow, that's about it for today. I, I have a tip for the day. It's this kind of off the wall thing and uh, it's something we've been doing that you might want to do. It can make you feel good and other people feel good and it doesn't cost you anything. Uh, there is a Dairy Queen up the street from us uh, and this works for other restaurants too that has a discount for seniors. Well, we never use that discount. Who does? You know, if you're a senior, right? Unless maybe you do, but we probably don't. So when you go up there for dinner tonight, ask for the senior discount and when they give it to you, Give it as a tip to the people that serve you and they'll be amazed and you'll be happy and they will too. Just give it a try. I'll see you next time.